Hello everyone, today I'm bringing you a video about the new crafting system. We're gonna be comparing it to the old system, we're gonna try to understand how it works. And I'm gonna clear up sort of the some of the misconceptions that some people have. A lot of people think the, the new crafting system is underpowered, but its reality is that the power has been shifted. Uh, so first of all, let's analyze how the new crafting actually works what the new crafting system objective is and once you understand the new philosophy it will be easier to benefit from the system so i have my lovely paint here and you say what the fuck is this lizard i'll explain it. so the red represents the old crafting and the green represents the new crafting this is if you drop an item with the tier 20 how high can you craft it right so in the old system, it was really common, right, that you drop a tier 5 and you could easily make it a tier 12, tier 10, tier 15 if you get lucky, right, with the old system, the red bar. Why? Because you drop an item, it has like zero instability and you can just guardian, 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 guardian and you get 10 tiers out of it, right? So what people used to do is people used to get items kind of like around this area. And they would just brute force their way RNG-wise into here, right? Even if it was only like 5% 5 5 chance to happen, I mean, you could just get lucky, right? With the stab with, with stabilities and guardians until you can brute force like a tier 5 into a tier 15 or a tier 10 into a tier 20. This is no longer the case. As you can see, the power has especially shift in the middle of the table. So right now, instead of uh, stability, items have crafting potential. How does crafting potential work? If you, if you drop an item that has really low tiers, for example a tier 5, its crafting potential is going to be really low. It's going to be like 10, 8, 5. What, what that means is like, mo even if you get really lucky, you're going to make a tier 5, maybe into like a tier 7, into a tier 10 maybe, right? If you get extremely lucky. But the average is going to be one or two crafts. And that's why a lot of new players that uh, uh, are coming back to the game and they were used to just get a tier 5 and make it into a tier 10 for free, are like, what the fuck? The new system is shit. And it's not actually the case. What is happening is like, if you have a bad item, it's you're not going to make it a good item. The new system emphasizes drops right over craft if you find a good item like if you find a tier 10 right in this patch you, you, you you're gonna easily uh, uh, you're, you're not gonna make it too too good because it's just a tier 10 but you can see here if you find a tier 15 it's gonna be really easy to make it a tier 20 why is that because how crafting potential works okay let me show you an example. So these are some items that I found playing the game. We have this item, right? And you can see it has tier 6, tier 5, tier 5, tier 2. This item dropped like this. And it has 25 crafting potential, even though it's a tier uh, uh, 17, right? It just dropped like this. And then we have this item here, right? That it's only... It's less than a tier, it's less than those tiers, right? It's tier 6 plus 3, that's 9, plus 4, it's 13. So this item has less tiers than this one, but the crafting potential is less. So you're gonna be able to craft more tiers in this item than in this one. And that is the complete opposite of the old system, right? In the old system, the lower the tiers on the item, the more room to craft. And if you find an item that already has a lot of tiers, like we show in the graphic, like when you find an item that already had like, you know, 17 tiers, 15 tiers, what normally happened is it because it, they stabi the base stability was so high, the item just broke, right? You you went in for the first craft and it's like a 60% chance, boom, it breaks. The item is gone, right? And you, uh, you drop a really good item, it's a tier 17 or whatever on the perfect base, but because the, stabi the base stability is so high, you get you are, it's actually harder to craft on it in order to improve it. Now it's the opposite. If you drop a tier 15 on the base you, ha you have, you will be able to use that item, right? You will be able to craft that item and you will be rewarded. So again, in the old system, the most important part was 
farming items towards this area. This was the sweet spot, right? You get a tier, tier 12 with the things that you want, right? Or a tier 10, a blue item with the two prefixes that you want or whatever. And then you just put some guardians and you take them here, right? Uh, sorry, I got rudely interrupted <laughs> by my girlfriend who didn't have keys. So let's go back at it. <laughs> in the new system, basically, in the old system, you used to farm this sweet spot, like I mentioned, right? You used to go for for, for, for a tier 12 or something, and you would try to guardian, 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 hope you get 10 in a row or 8 in a row, and now you get a tier 20, sit at the gambler, blam, 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 right? That's what you used to do. Now it's not the case. Now what you want to do, like, so in the, in the old system, like I mentioned, you wanted items here to take them there, and now in the current system, you want to get items here. Now, obviously, these items are way harder to drop, but if you drop them, you will, you will take them here. These items, basically, now, again, if you drop an item around this area, maximum you're gonna take it here. So, I think that's what a lot of people are misunderstanding. It's a, a lot of people were used to, wait, what the fuck? I used to make tier 20s with tier 10s. What is going on? Yeah, guess what? A tier 10 is not a good item anymore. Like, it should, right? It makes no sense that you. it's better to get a tier 10 to make a tier 20 than getting a tier 15 or an Exalted to make a good item. It makes no sense. Again, so technically, crafting has been buffed in this, in this part here, right? It has been buffed since it's way easier to get tier 15s to tier 20s and Exalted to tier 20, 22, etc., right? But in order to compensate for that, obviously, you have to drop them. You can't just spam these items, spawn these items. You actually have to go play the game and find them. But if you find them, you will make good items. Again, the patch is being all going on for like, what, two days, right? And just look at how many tier 20s I made, right? Tier 20, and this is actually a really good item, right? I made this crit multi spell like stuff, really good item. I made this crazy like crit multi, crit multiplier fucking spear. Uh, you, you you can literally just make tier 20s like non-stop and not only that but you even have remaining forging potential on them because they spawn with so much crafting potential forging potential right that uh, you, you you actually have even remaining potential you know to mirror them so you can make a copy and throw them into the legendary system etc right so again that that is the most thing the, the the most important thing that we have to understand like Good items, right, come with more uh, potential. Bad items don't come but with potential and therefore you can't really craft with them. Again, if we take a look at these items, look, you know, intelligence, endurance, nine forging potential. Like, th this is, would be the complete opposite, right? These items would spawn, this item last patch would spawn with literally zero instability and you will be able to craft it to 30 to 40, like at least get seven crafts on it, right? But now, this item who, who would, come, would, would spawn with like 15 stability or 30 stability, now it's spawning with 30 or, or more forging potential, so you can actually work on the item. Okay, so now that that is clear, we can talk about the new crafting system. First of all, we're going to take a look at the item generation. Um, sorry, at the runes and the glyphs, okay? But let's take a look at them. First, all the glyphs. We have a few glyphs, right? We have the Glyph of Hope. Glyph of Hope is basically your standard crafting. When you use it, you have a 20% chance for it to not consume any, any potential, right? You put this in, you want to get your chill chance upgraded, and you see it can cost 1 to 12, right? Again, you, you see what I mean right here. We have 25, so it's most likely this item will get a, be a tier 20. And you have a chance of not consuming anything, right? The, uh, as the tiers go up, the forging potential also goes up, so crafting a tier 5 is more expensive than crafting a tier 1. Why is this important? Let's just say you have an item, right, that has remaining tiers up, right? You have this. This is gonna cost 1 to 24, but if I wanted to craft this, cost 1 to 18. Obviously, if I go for, if I go for this one and I roll 24, I only have 23 left. So I could get fucked, right? I could get unlucky, it could happen, right? But if you craft this, 
You know 100% you're not gonna craft 23, so you know you will get this craft for free, even if you have one crafting potential left. So when you're crafting, be smart. You can guarantee get crafts more, for example, how much will a tier 1 cost? Right? 1 to 24, right? Well, right there. Right, chance to ignite, not chance to ignite, uh, blind, right? 1 to 20, again, we could roll this at the moment, right? Fire, damage when channeling, right now, we would probably want something like chance to chill, right? Or chance to slow, since it's a weapon, we we'll go for chance to slow, and again, we go for uh, for hope. Hey, it crafted 6, it's, it's alright, it's still, we still got a free, like, we, we know we can get this craft for free. Right? Because we have 6 potential left. And again, I think damage over time is going to be more important. We go for it. Doesn't proc. And we get the we get, we get, we get the slam, right? Again, we could have gone... We could have got uh, Lucky and Glyph of Hope procs. And we would have gotten this last, this last craft for free. So again, be a bit smart. Look at the numbers. Look at the ranges. And be smart about it, right? Um, it's common sense. But don't just like slam non-stop the same... Don't craft on the expensive ones first, because again, right now this 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 craft that we just did costed one to twenty four. We only had six potential left, so even though we didn't have the twenty four that can cost, we still got able to get the craft right. So it was really efficient for how much potential we have left. The next craft is Glyph of Chaos. How does Glyph of Chaos work? Glyph of Chaos, for example, imagine you're playing a minion build, right? You have minion physical damage and you wanted this to... I was like, oh my god, this weapon is amazing. But I actually want to use... I, I actually want to roll a minion stat here. Well, you go Glyph of Chaos, 1 to 18. You close your eyes and you hope for the best. And again, like I mentioned, this item is gonna 100% if we use Glyph of Hope, it's gonna 100% be a tier 5 because look, 1 to 18, we roll it. And now it's 1 to 24. Just like that, guaranteed, right? And we still have fortune potential left in case we wanted to use a rune of shaping or something like that. So again, Glyph of Hope, we use just the standard, like I've just mentioned. Glyph of Chaos, we use when we drop an item that has really good stats that we want, but let's just say it has, it has something that is not desirable for us. For example, when I crafted this axe right here, uh, this was damage over time. But I, I was a tier 4 damage over time, and I used Glyph of Chaos, and it re-rolled into the melee crit chance. And you say, but Lizard, the chances of that happening are so slim. It's actually not true, because the things that re-roll on an item are things that are available on that slot. So for example, if you're using a melee weapon, and you check what melee prefixes you can get, most of them are just melee, crit... Attack speed, leech. It's pretty reasonable to re-roll into something useful. It might not be best in slot, that like this case, but it's still you really have a high chance of re-rolling into something useful just because the pool is actually full of useful stuff, right? So keep that in mind also. Um, then we have the glyph of order, right? The glyph of order is I haven't used it once yet, but basically the glyph of order. You want to use it when, let's just say, you have, uh, you're playing melee, right? You're playing melee. Uh, for example, like the axe I just showed, right? You're playing melee. And, uh, you know, you, you need to make sure you drop, let's just say, your melee crit chance, you know? Uh, your, your, your armor shred rolls really high, right? You have a tier 4 and it rolls max roll on the tier 4. You can, you, can you can roll the Glyph of Order, so when you upgrade it to tier 5, it keeps the max roll. This is gonna be useful on things like flat damage, um, percentage HP, hybrid HP, etc., etc. Right? You wanna make sure that when you do those upgrades, the hit, the hit, the, the 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 tier five is max rolled. So again, leaf of order when you wanna guarantee the max roll of something, right? Uh, it could be useful for things like. Fireball peers or things that you need to reach a crit avoidance, right? Things that you need to reach a specific amount in the roll for the item to be useful. Resistances, etc. Right? And then you have Glyph of Despair. Glyph of Despair is really cool. And basically, what you do with Glyph of Despair is like when you have an item that has an open suffix, like a tier 1 suffix or something, right? Like for example, let's just say I had this item, right? Even though it doesn't have potential left. 
you could use Cliff of Despair in Chance to Chill, and it would have the it has a chance for the chill to get his own slot. And then this will be open for you to keep crafting on it, adding adding an extra prefix, suffix in this case, right? Uh, Glyph of Despair has higher chances to be effective, right? If the item has overall high tiers, so if you use it on an item that already has like 15 tiers, it's gonna have a higher chance to proc the, the seal than if you use it on an item that has 10 tiers. The higher overall tiers, the more chances to succeed. And using it on low tier affixes, it also increases the chance to succeed. So it, you are more, more likely to seal a tier 1 uh, affix than a tier 4, right? Again, keep in mind that when you use the Glyph of Despair, it's actually the process of an upgrade. So you cannot seal tier 5s, because tier 5s are already max upgrade. This is a Glyph. So when you use Glyph of Despair, it will either upgrade into the next tier, or it will seal without the upgrade. Okay? It's, it's a... 50-50 situation here. Again, Glyph of Despair, this is like for super GG endgame gear. They're pretty rare, right? I have 12 of them at the moment. And I've been playing for like two days non-stop. So you get a bit of an idea of how rare it is. You're gonna get them. They're not like mirror tier or anything, but it's not something that you're gonna just have like candy, right? So these are the, the basic glyphs, pretty much. Uh, you also have... Uh, and then you also have the, the runes, okay? Rune of Shattering... Uh, it like it used to be, you know, you have an item, it has something you want, you put a rune of shattering, and you get and you get the stuff, right? That's nothing has changed. Then you have rune of refinement, it rerolls the, the the affixes on something, right? So imagine we have this weapon, have to and we, we don't want oh we think the melee physical damage only rolled 39, which is the minimum roll, and we want to roll it higher. So you know we go we go for the we go for the rune of refinement, we roll it, it consumes our thing, and now it rolled 40. It rolled a bit better now, you know. Again, these runes are a bit underpowered at the moment. I don't know if it's intended, because as you saw, the cost of them uh, being used is from 1 to 20. And this used to be like maybe 1 stability, and now it's up to 20 fortune potential. So again, I wouldn't recommend using runes of refinement unless it's absolutely mandatory. I, I, I don't know if this is intended or not. Maybe, 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 it, maybe it is. But at the moment they're definitely underpowered in my opinion, so don't don't worry too much about them. Then you have Rune of Removal. Again, I think Rune of Removal is, you know, let's just say you get an item, you try your Glyph of Chaos, you don't chaos it into something you want. Rune of Removal is basically like a last resort where if you don't remove the thing on the item you have, right, the item would be useful. It, it's like it used to be, basically. It's a complete... Uh, it's a complete... Uh, uh, it's, it's a complete uh, gamble, but now it also gives you shards. So, you know, for example, if you have a... Let's just say you have a, you find an item, like a tier 7 item, and let's just say it has one affix that you really want, minion dodge rating, right? And you use rune of removal, you're either gonna get... Not, you're gonna remove one of them, and you're also gonna get the tiers, right? So we're gonna use the rune of removal, right? Right there. We got the armor, right? And we removed it. So not only it removes, but it also gives you materials. This, this can obviously be really helpful for target farming affixes on drops. Again, really helpful if you're looking for those class-specific affixes, etc. Right? Again, this item is useless now, so who cares? Then we have uh, Rune of Discovery. What is Rune of Discovery for? Again, going back to Exalted. Imagine you drop an Exalted, an Exalted like this one, right? They're like, oh my god, it has exactly what I want. But I want to use this for the forging, uh, for the for the forging of, of legendaries, right? And because look, I found an amulet or whatever. I found an amulet with one crafting potential, right? Uh, let's. I, I found an amulet with one crafting legendary potential, and I really want to get this uh, a specific uh, prefix. Well, if it's a uh, one legendary potential, your chances to sealing the good one is actually only 25%. Uh, so, for example, on an item like this, though, in order to be able to craft, to put it into the into the the cachet, the eternity cachet in the dungeon, it has to... it needs at least four affixes. Even if they're tier one. What happens here if I want to add any random affix? What's gonna happen if this can cost one to, one to 20? 
So if I craft it and I get a 20, this I can I can no longer use this item for the dungeon mechanic because it only has tier, tier aff three affixes. What is Rune for Discovery for? You use Rune of Discovery, seven potential. It has, has no forging potential. You randomly rob, you random, you get some random shit. But now at least you have a chance at this item that only has seven forging potential to at least craft some, get something useful. Obviously, when you put this into the dungeon, you probably want to avoid the low tiers, right? And you just hope for the best. You completely YOLO in your one legendary potential uniques. Uh, to get the tier 6, right? Or imagine if we upgrade this now with Glyphs of Hope, we didn't get lucky. So obviously, if you put this into the slot machine on an amulet, you either want to hit the tier 3 or the tier 6, obviously the tier 6 more desired, and you hope for the best, you don't hope, you don't slam this. But if you slam this, it's not like you wasted a lot of things, right? Because again, like again, getting one legendary potentials is not, it's, it's not that uncommon. Right, uh, for example, something like Bleeding Heart. I have Bleeding Heart with two, two potential, Bleeding Heart with one potential. I have another Bleeding Heart uh, that I made with another one potential. So, you know, you could just like throw shit into low low tier items with have one legendary potential and hope for the best. Okay? So that's what Rune of Discovery is for mainly. Then you have Rune of Shaping. Rune of Shaping replace, uh, reforge, reforges the implicits of items. And just like Rune of uh, Refinement, right now it, co it, it has a really, really high uh, potential cost. So I would advise you to not use it unless it's completely necessary. Hopefully they fix this and they make it so you can actually shape a few times, you know. Like at least, we used to be able to shape like 10, 20 times, right? So hopefully they, rem they make it so it only costs one potential or two potential or something like that. Then we have, I don't have any because I use them. But uh, then you have uh, Rune of Ascendance. What Rune of Ascendance does is like when you put a random item, right? A random item, it can be it can be just any item, right? Like for example, you buy this great this great chest piece, you put it in, you use your Rune of Ascendance, and this will turn this item into a random unique of the same type. So you can get any unique chest piece, basically. That is not a boss drop. So boss drops like Wings of Argentus, things like that, wouldn't drop because they're specific for a boss. Again, be smart about this. If you use these uh, runes on items that have a very big pool of items, let's look how many unique chess pieces there are in the game. They're like 20, right? Well, getting the one you want is going to be really, really, really hard. But if you use it, for example, on a, on a spear, where there's only four unique spears in the game, well, your chances are going to go higher just based on mathematics, right? So again, be smart, try to use Runes of Ascendance on things that are actually uh, realistic, right? So that would be my advice. And then the last one, we have Rune of Creation. Uh, is it Rune of Creation? I think it's called Rune of Creation. What Rune of Creation does, this one here, it's basically like a one-use mirror from PoE. And what you don't want to do with this is like when you have a really god-tier item, for example, an item like my stuff, right? A god-tier item. Don't, it has forging potential left, right? So what you can do with this is instead of keep crafting on it, you can save it, save the potential, put it into the thing, use the mirror, right? The 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 thing, the one use mirror, uh, rune of creation, and then what what's gonna happen is that this item will go to zero potential, but you will get another one exactly like this one with zero potential. Why is this useful? Because then. If you find something like, for example, uh, an Omnividence or something like that, right? With three potential, which can happen, or two potential. I found this one with one, right? And that's kind of like what I did. I used a really good stuff on it and I got unlucky and I got the chill chance. You would use your kind of copy of your good item into those really GG uh, level uniques that have uh, potential to be became really good legendaries. So again, if you have a really, really good GG crafted item, exalted item, right? You use the mirror rune, like the rune of creation. So you can keep the item for yourself, so you can still use it. And you don't feel bad to put that item into the RNG machine of the Eternity Cache on the hopes of getting the best item in the game, right? Um, obviously, the hard part of this is going to be dropping the actual mirror thingy and to actually drop a uh, unique that has the enough legendary potential. For example, I just dropped this, this Quicksilver Coil, with three legendary potential. 
And obviously, I would love this to have it on my build. And but I don't want to throw my really good Exalted Ring into it and then maybe I don't slam the good thing about it or I lose my ring. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait till I get the mirror. I'm gonna copy my good ring. I'm gonna keep it for myself. And then the copy I will throw with this ring into the legendary system in the hopes of getting a quick, uh, my ring plus the Quicksilver Coil stuff, basically, right? And again, that overall is the system, TLDR, Really good, fun for the end game. Glyph of Chaos is super fun. You can get really unexpected things that make the game extremely fun. Don't be frustrated if you just installed the game, you just got a few items, you're like three hours into the campaign and you see what the fuck, crafting is shit. No, it's not. You're just you're just in the campaign, you know? Like imagine if you went into any other game that has crafting, like Path of Exile, and you tell people Yo, uh, the crafting in the campaign is shit. Yeah, of course it's shit. You still don't have the crafting recipes. You still don't have the materials. You still don't have the good bases. So again, in order to... Crafting is more of a, like a end game focus right now. But when you actually get to the end game, the crafting is something you get excited about. It's something that you're actually willing to do. And it's not something that you're fucking scared of because you think your items are just going to fracture on your first try. Again, I think really good shift makes drops more important, makes crafting exciting, makes the chase better, and I think it just makes the, the game an overall better experience. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed this guide. I know it has been a bit extent, uh, but I think there was a bit to cover and I want to make sure I covered everything. Hope you guys uh, enjoy the patch. And again, if you make some sick items, I would love to see them, you know? Uh, so share it with me. You can find me every day live on Twitch. And uh, I hope so. I hope you guys. I see you there, guys. Uh, I'll see you on the next one. And bye bye.